Woo! We're live! I'm solo today. Let's wait for some people to show up. Welcome, welcome. Just solo. Welcome to virtual happy hour. I'm going to wait to get started. When people show up, at least one person has to show up and then I'll get started. Where are you people? Just going to keep waiting. I need an eyeball. Anybody? Any eyes? I'm looking for my mother-in-law. How about her? <laughs> hmm. Okay, let's get started. So, as some of you may have noticed, welcome everyone to Virtual Happy Hour. I'm by myself today, um, but I do have a special guest. Kayla Jo couldn't be with us today, and she's sorry. Uh, she has a little tension headache. You know how that happens, guys. So we, we're going to have a break, give her a bottle of wine so she can make it go away. So welcome, welcome. I have a comment already. Hi, Jackie. So today we are talking. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to pull up all my banners, people. Okay, here you go. Welcome. Hi. Oops. <laughs> it just gave away my secret. Okay, okay, okay. We have a special guest because today we're going to talk about wine and art. And we're gonna do a fun thing where we are pairing wine with art movements. And so I am bringing a special guest with me today. And here she is, if I can make my thing go. Hello. Shelly. Hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome, Shelly. Oh, I always do this the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, 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 the other way. Association. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So Shelly is going to be our um, expert panelist <laughs> because she's in the, in the arts, okay? okay she's our okay. I'm going to do my best to so, um, so welcome. Help, keep this, help keep this going. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be your first guest. I love this. Um, I'm happy to have a guest. This seems like fun. I'm really sad that Kayla Joe couldn't be here for this, but you know, we'll do this again. I think that we'll like having you. So. Oh, great. I feel like I'm auditioning. <laughs> oh, well, yes, as you should. <laughs> yeah. Makeup. So tell the people who don't know you, just in case, tell them a little bit about yourself. Just a smidge. The smidge. Okay. Yes, my name is Shelly Bodworth. I'm the executive director of the Fort Dodge Fine Arts Association, and that is my role here today. Um, but I am also a, a community and college coordinator for Iowa Central Community College, and I am their accompanist, and I do all kinds of nonprofit work with the theaters and various other art and culture groups in Fort Dodge. You're, you're a busy individual. Very busy. <laughs> I am a busy individual, but um, you know, I don't have kids, so the arts get to be my family. That's true. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, I mean. that was really kind, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> arts is my, the arts is my family. The arts is your family. I mean, yeah. what other family could you want, really? The arts is nice. It doesn't talk back. We the arts always Understand. prevails in no matter what kind of hardship or turmoil is going on, true. the arts always win. It's true. But so, not the money. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> we're here. We're going to talk about wine and art. But first, before we get there, virtual cheers. Yes. People. Cheers. <laughs> so, what wine do you have today, Shelly? I am drinking the um, Goldenrod. Well done. Good choices. It is delicious. Delicious. And I have the Petite Pearl. So we're we're wined, we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. So let's do this. Let's okay. talk pairing wine with art. I wanted to say this is all going to be a surprise for Shelly uh, for the most part. She's presenting the movements, but uh, everything else is kind of a surprise. Um, and I have one thing that I <laughs> I wanted to throw in there. I don't know if anybody knows about this that you can travel virtually with the Google Arts and Culture app. So I guess I'm trying to bring this together because I feel like we're going to talk about all these things that you might need to go to a museum to see, but really you don't have to. You can go virtually, get your wine, pair it. Uh -huh. okay, so let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Good luck to us. <laughs> good luck to us. <laughs> okay. So are you, oh, I can't remember. Did we decide that you're going to throw out the, the movements first and then we I will pair decide. <laughs> well, okay. I here. Let's start here. Okay, you want to start with the Renaissance period? Yes. Okay. So, 
first you tell me when you <laughs> I'm going to I'm just going to compare what I think, but you tell okay. me what you think when you think Renaissance. Um, well, it's renewal, right? Mm -hmm. It's renewal and refresh and the new the new dawn. It is we need a re we need a re renaissance right now. I feel great. Like. <laughs> great. And so for that time, I was thinking goldenrod, which is perfect. You're having it. Perfect. Yes. Wow. I am really enjoying looking at the Mona Lisa and drinking. Oh, yeah. I'll bring it oh, back. Here. Okay. Yeah. So here. Yes. Uh, let me move this banner. It out also of the way. matches her complexion a little bit. Yeah, it, it does just a smidge. <laughs> the color of goldenrod matches the golden hue of the Mona Lisa. Uh, sorry, yeah. hi, Kathy, Beachy Dubs. I missed that. Hey, Kathy. Um, so yeah, I feel like, you know, when you're thinking like renewal, I don't know, I guess goldenrod really just like fit for me. Hi, we're back. Here's our faces. Oh, hi. <laughs> like, so well, I look at the definition of goldenrod. Do you know the definition of goldenrod? I mean, I know that it's a plant, but go on. Tell me the definition. Well, but it, it encourages growth and it is also a sign of um, luck and good fortune. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Huh. Yeah. Well, I think you're right. Oh, there, we Megan. I gotcha. <laughs> love it. You did research. This is a good audition. Your name. Oh, good. good, good. <laughs> But okay. yeah, I mean, the Renaissance was a good time, was a, a pivotal time for literature and art and philosophy. And, you know, that that artwork has carried over through today, too. So like you said, you can easily take a virtual tour um, on many of the online museums. I'm trying to think of examples of Renaissance work in our community. Yeah, I don't know. I got nothing. We can we can come back. We can. What about for people? If you know of any examples of Renaissance work, drop um, a comment. Yeah, and if you're if it's right or if we believe you, um, I'll give you a free mug. Woo! How about that, guys? Mm -hmm. Legitness. Okay, so let's let's move on to our next bit of art. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So we're on to romanticism. I just picked something. I don't know that I felt like it looks. Like it belongs Jacques, in that era? Jacques Louis David. Evidently, he was really pivotal in the Romanticism movement. I don't know. What do you think? Yes, I would agree. I would agree. I concur. Okay. So, uh, with that, I thought Brianna, because, like, I don't know. When I think like Romanticism, Romantics, when I think of anything like that where you just want something to be like, I don't know, a little, when you're thinking like, oh, something's perfect, right? I guess I'm not, you're gonna have to elaborate on romanticism romanticism for me, but like Brianna just fits for me. I don't know, it's, it's that, you know, not too sweet, not too dry. It's kind of like one of those things when you're like in first love with somebody, this uh -huh. is like one of the signs for real to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of the work that I recall um, in the last 48 hours since we decided to do this topic, <laughs> Um, was a lot of just um, celebration of individuals mm -hmm. to an extent. And then when I looked up the definition for Brianna, it means noble. <laughs> oh, perfect. So noble individuals. Oh, I love it. I love it. Like, let's celebrate. I mean, what better way to celebrate the individual than with a glass of wine? And right. Brianna at that. Why not? Yeah. We'll pretend like that's what this is. Yes, but I think that's a good pairing. Yeah. Noble and individualism. You did a really good job pairing these. Hey, thank you. You're doing a really good job telling me about these movements because. I hope Eric Anderson's not watching. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> hey, or maybe he's learning a thing. Oh, maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, oh, yeah. Uh, impressionism. I felt like I. I kind of understood this one, but can you elaborate a little bit more on impressionism for me? Um, impressionist. I did have this hanging in my college dorm room all four years. Ooh, it's by so the pretty. way, yeah. I think of um, and, and I am giving you my personal feedback. I am not giving you like college book 
I am oh. not, my background is music and theater, so I am just relaying some points that I have come across and and accept them as opinion or fact, whatever. But wow. um, but what I think of is capturing um, feelings, capturing emotions mm -hmm. with um, light, and playing with light and reflection. Not only mm -hmm. in this painting, but I think I think that that's probably a uh, staple or kind of standard across the board for impressionism. Um, it kind mm -hmm. of is whimsical. It's not necessarily a precise depiction. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So like kind of is like the, the artist's interpretation, right? Mm -hmm. is that kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Either, I think either of a location or of the feeling a location inspired. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you first. And I, I felt like this whole era just really spoke rosé to me. And I felt like a little bubbly rosé because it, like, I felt like it needed just like a little warmth in your cheeks, you know, like, you know how like gets it gets you like that. Like, I just felt like it, you needed that, I don't know, the rosy cheek feeling or the feeling like just when you've just had your first glass of wine or I don't know how far it takes other people. But for me, it's one glass and just just that feeling. I felt like this is the kind of wine that needs to go with this era. Yeah. No, and, and bubbles are whimsical. And I think impressionist paintings are somewhat whimsical. Totally. In my I agree. Opinion. But I did. I did oh, look up at the definition for that, and it wasn't as, I mean, it, prickly shrubs. <laughs> or in so, Latin, it just means red, or I no. think, or rosé. I can't I, I think it, means, it might mean pink. I don't remember. You know, I didn't look anything up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just, like, I, we're, doing, I, hey, we're doing really well. I mean, we, I can't, like we can't be perfect on all of them. So. No, we don't need to be professional either. We're we're like we're dialing this down for everybody. We need to be at the I like real. We're dialing as opposed to dumbing. That we're dialing it down. We're dialing, dialing. down. We're not dumbing. God no. People are smart. Yes. Yes. Okay. So next, let's do this. Post impressionism. Mm. Yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So here we here we have Starry Night. Uh -huh, yes. So, yes. So um, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh. oh. <laughs> so it's hard. I, I can't see you. Um, but oh, no, the post impressionism no, was late nineteenth century, early twentieth century. Um, this was. Um, you know, we should have Jennifer Dutcher buzz in and be like, well, this is what the brush stroke, the brush strokes of the different <laughs> eras, because I don't really know those. But um, um, definitely a more natural depiction of um, lighting and color. Not, I mean, although the brush strokes makes this whimsical, um, the coloring is more natural. Um, not only Van Gogh, there's Gauguin and Cezanne. See, I'm in, I am recalling a lot of my seventh grade tag um class material right now oh if i had i don't remember that time in my life at all <laughs> yeah there's a reason i do that i can't share but i'll i'll, I'll uh, share with you later well let's talk about that later <laughs> yeah so well, that's kind of my 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 impression what's your impression uh yeah i mean yeah it felt like a little more it felt like they were the impression was getting more like, yeah, like you were saying, like more like closer to reality. And so it almost felt like it mm -hmm. feels like you go from like this age, of, it almost feels like you go from like college fun times to like you're like slap adulting, like here's mm -hmm. real life. And so yeah. with that, I thought Petite Pearl because like what speaks better adulting than a nice dry red? Why not? Mm. It feels adulty. To me. Yes, I agree. I agree. And Petite Pearl, that's a that's a specific grape, right? Or what is that? Yeah. You know? It's it is. It's a specific grape. It's called Petite Pearl. It's a red grape, okay. um, which is misleading because the name is Pearl. So you think white, but it's not. It's red. Um, and it yeah, and it's the it's a newer grape that's high in tannin. 
uh, which means it it makes you feel like your tongue is drying out. So it's it's actually really good okay. new grape for Iowa wines. But anyway, it feels like is that it's one like of the, the ones you grow. Uh, it's what Jerry Cooper grows for for us. Oh. Um, so still in Webster County, for those of you that know okay. Cooper Vineyard. Um, but yeah, Petit Pro. Cheers. Um, it feels yeah. very. You know, like when you, some people think like, oh, you have to be an adult and drink red wine, which isn't the truth. You can drink whatever wine you want, guys. But for that stereotypical feeling, <clears throat> this felt very like, like harsh reality. And I guess I, I wasn't thinking like post-impressionism wasn't harsh reality, but it was like a little more realistic to me. Adult. I mean, we hurry to be adults forever and then, we're, you know, here we are. No, kids, <laughs> if you're watching, first off, kids, if you're watching, you're not supposed to be watching because you're not old enough. Second, don't right. grow up. Uh, no, it's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> nope. Uh, but next, let's move on because we get to do oh. these fun adult things. Cubism. Uh, I felt like Pablo Picasso was like super representative of this, but go ahead. Tell us about cubism. I mean, cubism is, this is the perfect example. It's geometric shapes, it's collage type work that came later, um, avant-garde comes mm -hmm. to mind. These would be the um, Picassos. Um, and also not only with art, but I believe in cubism, um, architecture took kind of a, an interesting turn as shift mm -hmm. as well, um, as well as literature, so. Yeah, I mean, we could do authors and wine. We could do. <laughs> we could go so far. Mm -hmm. There's so many options. Mm -hmm. okay. But with cubism, um, I can't tell you why, but I like St. Pepin felt like the the right thing to do here. Like it needed to be a little a little bit sweet and a little bit tart. Not tart, but you know, like a little a little bit dry, but a little bit sweet. And like just hitting the right note right in the middle, like it felt like, I don't know, it felt like the right thing. Plus St. Pepin is kind of a weird grape. And I felt like cubism was a little strange. It is a little strange. And, and, and for me, it's kind of a comfortable, unsettling, being comfortable in the uncomfortable is what yeah. cubism is to me. So. Yeah. And yeah, and I feel like that's St. Pepin. Like St. Pepin is like, it's, it is like, it's something that you feel like you know, but then it's not. It's, right. it's like a Sauvignon Blanc, but then it's not. And it's, it's not the same grape that, um, I didn't look this up, so I'm not asking you pre questions that I already know the answer to, but is that similar to a Riesling? Um, you no, know? that would be, okay. Brianna is more like a Riesling for us. Okay, okay. St. Pepin is, I feel like sort of Sauvignon Blanc, but also, um, can't, it's not coming to me. I lost it. Sauvignon Blanc is the main one for me, but it's also a little bit like Pinot Grigio. Okay. So it's just a little, it like reminds you of both, but not. So I don't, it's, it's uncomfortable in the uncomfortable. Makes you feel uncomfortable, just a smidge, but also it's delicious. <laughs> then it's a win win. Perfect. Okay. So we have two more movements okay. to move through. And then, and then we can, I don't know, do whatever we want. <laughs> surrealism. Okay, surrealism. This was like, Salvador Dali is probably my all-time favorite artist. Maybe that's cl super cliche, but I just loved his work. I, don't, I think it's amazing. It's weird and it just echoes my odd high school years. Like, I love it. <laughs> and it's super recognizable. I mean, people yeah. cannot know that much about visual arts and say, oh, this is that Dolly guy, you know? Yeah, I know this yeah. one. Um, and, uh, Frida Kahlo um, right. is another one from the from that, mm -hmm. that surrealism era. Um, all this, all surrealism screams to me is like trippy, um, oh. tapping into the unconscious, um, imagining mm -hmm. things that aren't, I don't know, it's probably, we'd have to read the books, it might be, what a acid trip is. I don't know, Megan. I don't know. Yes. But when you're tapping it, when I think about the, uh, things being um, tapping into the unconscious and being a little uh, shwarmy, is that a word? I don't know. Shwarmy? <laughs> I don't know. Shwarmy. I don't know. I made that up just now. 
I need to copyright that. But um, yeah, it's a lot of imagery. We're getting into the 20th century. Um, yeah, I, I love this work too. I, I Not only this work, but just the whole era. I think it's interesting and it's unpredictable and um, it makes me happy in an uncomfortable sort of way. Agreed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, yes, I love this. Sorry, I feel like, sorry, I have to come back. There was a comment from Anne. She said, that St. Pepin is so crisp and edgy, just like Picasso's cubes. Thank you, Anne. That is exactly, that's Thanks, exactly Anne. what we were trying to say. God. We couldn't get it out. Anne got it for us. Yeah. Thanks, Anne. Yeah, thank you, Anne. <laughs> but let's right, Now we have to make sure we're right with all of our facts. I didn't know Anne was watching. It's so, it's, <laughs> Anne, <laughs> Anne and Amanda, probably. Okay. Okay, so what was your pairing? Mm. Yes. Sorry, here it is. So Geneva Red, because like the surrealism is kind of trippy, I feel like Geneva Red is that grape. It is not your typical grape that you put in a wine. This people did not think like we had the brains when we made this into a single varietal wine because it was such a typically this was blended. People did not put Geneva Red as a single variety grape wine. And it's weird, but delicious. And it, it's like, it pleases you, but it's weird. Are they grown in the US? Geneva Red? Yeah. Yes. We grow them in our 10 acres of grapes. Oh, you do? That's what you have. See, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, thought maybe you took an uh, annual trip to Switzerland. <laughs> you know, I don't even, can Switzerland grow grapes? Probably not. But I think of Geneva, when I hear Geneva, I think of Switzerland. I'm thinking, I'm trying to think where Switzerland is. Um, geography, but, people judging me, geography is not. Okay, then yes, they could. They have to because Germany can grow grapes and Germany's north of that. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. So then, I mean, maybe they do grow grapes. Maybe we do go to Switzerland. <sighs> we'll have to save the actual facts for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next time to find out. Yes. I like it. Okay. Last one. Let's do this. Let's let's wrap it up. Yep. Pop art. This stuff is fun. I enjoyed yep. it. So Andy Warhol, I mean, classic. Everybody knows this guy, right? I mean I mean, I would think so. I'm thinking right. of the 2009 Obama um campaign. Like this was all over it, right? Like wasn't that kind of a big deal? Yep. I mean it, it just has been. It just it it um you know, it pops up every now and then with different celebrities and and, and then yes, the Campbell soup cans please right. and, and people rip off, you know, this this type of look all the time. I, I like it. I love the mass media mm -hmm. um, kind of era. I, I'm actually, sitting, <laughs> I'm, well, I'm sitting in front of um, one of yeah. Thier's pieces that was mm -hmm. the former um, director of education at the Blandin. And she, she does stuff like that, um, mass media, mixed media stuff in her work where it's painted and, and also has um, overlying collage type pieces yeah. on top of it. Pop culture, mixed media, fun, vibrant. Yeah. Usually has a strong message. Yeah, yeah. So I thought with the pop art, I thought La Crescent, it just seemed like, I mean, it has a strong message. That's for sure. This, I mean, La Crescent really hits you in the mouth, as Ooh. it were. It seemed, and I feel like that's sort of what pop art does, just kind of hits you in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like then viewers in the in the virtual realm, take yourself to the Google cult, what is it? Arts and culture app, or or just go to a website, any museum website, and you can just scroll through that art, pick your pick your art movement era, grab your bottle of Silver Creek wine, or any wine. Or can, any wine. I can give you alternative. Preferably. I can give you alternative suggestions. Leave a comment if you want an alternative. I don't know where the comments are. Okay, guys, leave a comment. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <Wherever that's> <laughs> And I'll, I'll give you an alternative selection, but. A couple things um, real quick. If you're into kind of the more progressive and modern type art, um, I really like the Mass Mocha um, exhibits. Those are from the Modern Museum of Art, Modern Ooh. Art Museum. Um, and mm. I've been to several of their pop-ups and some of their um, on-site locations, and they just have really interesting pieces. If you're looking for something a little bit more contemporary, if you want something a little bit more traditional, um, I mean, the Louvre, even has a yeah 
web, uh, whatever, a virtual tour. So right. And so what's um what's the the Met in New York? They have they had some really good information too. Just beyond that, yep. I mean, you can check out all the art right there. I mean, obviously, in not COVID times like go visit these places, go to Europe though, if you want to drink while you're looking at the art. Yes, that's that's what I recommend. You can't do I'm that. I have to do some field research very soon for Someone's that. Gonna need, we're gonna need to write that off. Yeah, you're probably gonna need to send me to Switzerland to pick up your next grapes. Um, also, um, you know, because of the times we're living in, there are a lot of just local and, and small, um, you know, mom and pop shop artists that are able to do virtual exhibits and pop up exhibits. And so you can find all kinds of information on, on that online. I'm going to need those people to be in my life. Okay. I'm going to find them. Okay. I need to see some virtual pop up art. Yeah. Um, I just have to say that I think um, you were a big draw today. We've had a lot of viewers. So, hey, viewers, welcome. Shelly's here. Mm -hmm. I don't, I never, I think it's this way. No, no. I never know which way to point. Shelly's here with the Fort Dodge Fine Arts. She joined us today for virtual happy hour. We miss Kayla Joe. But yeah, that would have been so fun. But maybe if I made the cut, I'll be able to come back. I I think there's a good possibility. All right, all right. Well, you can tell me later. I don't want you to be up put on the spot. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, anyway, cheers, cheers to those in the virtual world. I'm almost out of wine, so that means we have to be done. Okay. All Bye. Right.